got a dream come true, what can you do? From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his rawhide shoe. The rippinest, roaringest, fightingest man the frontier ever knew. Daniel Boone was a man, yes, a big man. And he fought for America to make all Americans free. What a boom, what a doer, what a dream come a doer was he. Mississippi shore While the wild cat is wailing In the deep dark woods And the copperhead is hissing near her door <laughs> Well, I see you finally come around Who are you? Hoops. Hoops is the name. Rufus C. Hoops. Who are you? Boone. Daniel Boone. I'm real pleased to meet you, Mr. Boone. I hope you don't mind my taking a little drink off you. It was sort of hard work, pumping all that water out of your hide and, and getting the lair back then. <laughs> Did you pull me out? Yep. Right yonder. Where the Eddie had you up again the shore. Did you see my boat? Boat? I didn't know you had one. In a boat with a cargo of furs, I was taken to New Orleans. I was tied up, planning on spending the night ashore when I got wind of someone in the neighborhood. I saw a light in the bayou over there. Oh, the light you see was me. I was doing some fishing by pine torch. Nothing like a torch to bring the fish to you. Well, I thought it might be Choctaw. Figured I ought to be leaving there. Someone was on the boat. He jumped me, knocked me overboard. And shot you. That's what brought me over here. I heard the shot and wondered what was going on. Did you see the fellow? No, he hit me from behind. How long have I been here? Offhand, I'd say maybe four or five hours. I was beginning to think you was never coming to. That's why I took the liberty of drinking your liquor. Figured if you died, you'd never know. That liquor. Mm -hmm. The one you had in that pouch over there. The pouch you was hanging on to when I pulled you out of the river. This isn't mine. It isn't yours. Then you must have stole it off somebody. Are you sure you wasn't maybe nipping a little off that jug before you got pushed overboard? Hmm? I never saw that jug of this pouch before in my life. All I remember is grabbing a hold of something as I went overboard. Could be it belongs to whoever tried to do you in. Could be. I reckon you really came out second best. You lost a whole boatload full of furs, and all there was in that pouch was that liquor and a book with some writing in it. <laughs> What'd the writing say? Tell you the truth, Mr. Boone. I ain't never learned to read. This is Le Journal de Guilherot. Looks like 
looks like some sort of daily record or diary. Guess it means the Journal of Gila Rock. And I reckon that's the name of the fellow who tried to kill you. Do you know him? I ain't good at knowing people. But if that's his journal, it ought to tell you all about him. All you gotta do is read it. Well, I can't read it. It's in French. You mean to tell me that French writing is different than other kinds of writing? No. Writing's the same. Different words. Oh. Come to think of it, there's a French lady lives on an island in the swamp near here. Her name is Sylvie Du Marais. And she talks real educated like. So I reckon she can read. I'm not much obliged, but I just had a thought. Whoever stole my furs is going to sell them. I just might catch up with him in New Orleans. That sounds real reasonable. How long do you figure it take to get there? Maybe an hour or two come daylight. I don't aim to travel through these swamps at night. Well, I reckon we ought to get a little sleep. Mr. Boone, after what you've just been through, I reckon you could use it. Did you get this foul tasting rum? An old man brought it to me. A man named Hoops. He sometimes brings me fish and game and does some shopping for me down in New Orleans. Well, next time he brings liquor, tell him to get a different brand, will you? You are avoiding the subject. What I asked you was, are you sure that Gilly Rock is dead? How many times do I have to tell you before you believe me? You saw him die then with your own eyes? No, I did not see him die with my own eyes. I told you. British war sloop came down on us in the middle of the night and boarded us before we could make sail. I escaped in a dory. Last time I saw the ship, she was in flames and sinking. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? I would like to know about the journal. He knew he could not come back here and you were supposed to bring it to me. Yeah, I wasn't the only one on board who knew about that journal. He kept it hidden in his cabin. He told me he'd give it to me when we made a port, except we never made a port. With LaRoque dead, a dozen men went after that journal. I just got there first. And there were no other survivors? Who knows? I was too busy saving myself to notice. Well, what difference would it make? If the others lived through the battle like you, they must believe the journal is at the bottom of the ocean. We will drink a toast. Tomorrow or the next day, we should both be very rich. I'm afraid that's not quite true. Well, the treasure is here on the island. The journal will tell us where. All we have to do is dig it up and voila, the gold is ours. The trouble is I don't have the journal now. But you have just said you had it with you. I did, until tonight. Well, this I do not understand, if you had it with you. The ship that picked me up landed me in the Carolinas. I came overland from the coast of the Mississippi. And there I bought a load of furs from a river man up north that came down river. A load of furs? You wouldn't sell me the boat without them. I don't know what all this has to do with the journal. Uh, just about everything. I had it in a wallet strapped over my shoulder. When I was pulling the boat, the strap broke, the wallet fell into the river and sank, and the current carried me away. So now it is not at the bottom of the ocean but at the bottom of the Mississippi. I'm afraid that's the way it is. But you had time to read it. Yes, I had time to read it, but I can't read French. That part I left up to you. So I have spent six months in this dismal place for nothing. Well, we still have the furs. So now that becomes our entire fortune, a load of furs. Well, it'd bring in a pretty decent price in New Orleans. Decent price? You Oh, you blunder! Silly! Do you know what you have done to me? Silly! I promised this pirate Lerock that I will marry him so I can find out where his gold is buried. I send you as a trusted messenger to bring this journal to me and you come back empty-handed. I'm sorry, Sylvie. You're sorry? I had a million dollars in my hands and now due to your stupid... 
stupidity. I have nothing, and you say you are sorry. You doubt! If you're through yelling, I'd like to remind you of one thing. The gold is still here someplace on the island, within a mile or so. That much we know. Then what do you propose to do? Dig up the whole island? Well, it may take some time, but I'm sure we'll find it someday. Find it yourself. I've had enough of living in this swamp. Where do you think you're going? To New Orleans. I will sell the furs and live like a lady, for a change. Sylvie, come back! Don't cut into crowds. Well, I owe you my life, Hoops. I don't know how I can ever repay you. Well, I drank all that liquor. <laughs> well, I like to think my life's worth more than a bottle of liquor. Besides, it wasn't even mine. If you wasn't carrying it, I wouldn't have gotten a hold of it. And it was real good liquor. You know, a man like me don't get hold of nothing but rot gut very often. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If I find those furs, I'll buy you a canoe full of them. Well, you make a mighty pretty offer, but I still can't figure how you're going to prove they're yarn. You don't know nobody here, and you got nothing on you even to prove who you be. Well, I never cured a pelt yet I didn't put my mark on. If I can find them, I can prove that they're mine. Besides, I've got this journal. Anyway, I want to thank you for your help. Oh, wait. There's one more thing you ought to have. A little money. Well, you've done enough for me, Hoops. I can't take your money, too. Take mine. By rights, I reckon it belongs to you. Uh, it was also in that pouch with the other stuff. And I sort of snuck it out before you come around. And now I... I just don't feel right about it. Here. You'll need it. If you come across that fellow that done shot you, you don't even have a knife to skin him with. Thanks, sir. the richest I ever been. And I almost made it honest. Bon, bon pièce. Apportez-les à la chambre de travail. Howdy. Bonjour, monsieur. You by any chance uh, speak English? Oui. Whenever it becomes necessary, what is it that you wish? I'm uh, hoping to find a man. I can't tell you his name, but he came in... Uh, people town. come and go, monsieur. What was the appearance of the man? Well, I can't say. I never got a good look at him, but... Well, uh, what was his business? Well, I don't know what his regular business is, but right now it says thievery. Monsieur, uh, what else do you know about the man? Not a thing. Except that last night he tried to kill me. But why do you suppose that I might know such a person? Because what he stole from me was a boatload of furs, and I figure he's aiming to sell them. Accusing me of dealing in stolen furs? I'm not accusing you of anything. There's no way you'd know they were stolen. But if you bought any furs this morning, I want to take a look at them. Monsieur, I am an honest merchant. Why should I object? Hello, tap yourself.
Well, I trust you are satisfied, monsieur. Yep, I'm satisfied. Bon, then I am a relieved man. As I told you before, I am an honest merchant. It would hurt me to think that I had been dealing in dishonest goods. Well, then you'd better start hurting. Because every fur in this batch belongs to me. Or maybe I should say belong to me until someone stole my boat last night. Man, no. But how can you say such a thing? You see this B? Oui, I see it. That stands for Boone. Donald Boone of Kentucky, that's me. And if you want to look, you'll find that stamped on every pelt in this pile. But, monsieur, I, I did not know. I, I paid good money for these furs, highest prices. Well, you don't need to worry. I don't want the furs back. I just want to know who sold them to you. And then I'll collect the money and then that little extra that he owes me, too. Excuse me? Did you say he? Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, monsieur, it was not a he who sold me these furs. It was a she. You mean a woman? Oui. Very much a woman. Well, you wouldn't know who she is. Well, certainement. She, she comes here to buy furs always. Now she has sold some. Well, didn't that strike you as a little strange? Monsieur, in this business, you, you do not ask questions. You accept things as they come. Well, I guess it's uh, fortunate that I'm not in your kind of business, because I do have some questions. But of course, that is your privilege. Are you going to answer my questions? Hello. Considering your size, I believe I am inclined to say yes. Considering all the trouble I've been put to these last two days, I'm kind of glad you've decided to be agreeable. So, what are those questions? Well, who was the woman that sold you the furs? A lady by the name of Sylvie Dumaret. That name sounds familiar. You wouldn't know where I could find her. Oh, certainement. You might inquire at the Taverne Royale. I believe that she always stays there when she comes to New Orleans. How can I find this Tavern Royale? Ah, I will show you. It is very simple. You go outside and go to the right. It is not too far. Well, you know what, Mr... Uh... Proust. Marcel Proust. Mr. Proust, isn't it funny how real simple things sometimes get real complicated? Ah, oh, oui, monsieur. I myself, I am complicated now. You're not alone. Bonjour. Able to steal nothing. What are you doing here? I come to see Sylvie. I brought her a bottle of rum. I always bring her some whenever I get a chance to go down to the city. Sylvie's not here. Oh. Have you any idea where she's gone? Yeah, New Orleans. New Orleans? That's a funny thing. Seeing that her boat's still here. She took my canoe. Well, I reckon I'll come back and see her some other time. Maybe I'll find her at home then. <laughs> would your name be Hoops? It sure would. Rufus C. Hoops. <laughs> How did you know? Sylvie's mentioned you. Oh, that makes me mighty proud. How long have you known her? Mm, quite long. Uh, maybe you heard her talk of me. My name's Drake, Sebastian Drake. Oh, I'm glad you said it. I've been standing here thinking you might be some other fella. What other fella? A man with a French name. 
But shucks, I don't know why I should think you was French when you speak in English. <laughs> Name of Joe with G or something like that. Uh, Le Rock. Guy La Roque. That's it. That's it. Do you know him? Oh, I know of him. I, uh, I took him over to the cabin and sit for a while. It uh, gets kind of lonely out here by yourself. Oh, yes, sir. I suppose it does. Only I don't notice it like other folks do. For a drink, Mr. Hoops? Don't mind if I do. Matter of curiosity, what do you know about Gila Roque? Nothing. Nothing at all. Don't you know his name? Oh, yes. I also happen to know a fellow who's mighty anxious to find him. Who's that? A fellow I pulled out of the river last night. Name of Boone. Boone, huh? What's he look like? Oh, he's a big fella. Bigger than you. Been shot in the head. Just grazed him a little. Didn't kill him any. Only he'd have drowned if I hadn't pulled him out of the river in time. I see. Now, why would a man named Boone be looking for Gila Roque? But he thinks that's the name of the fellow who tried to kill him. Now, why would he think it was LaRoque? Did he see the man? No. He never got a look at him. But he had a hold of a pouch that this fellow was carrying. And uh, there was a book in it. And he, he, he... Well, I don't know how to explain it, but he, he just... Uh... A leather-bound manuscript written in French? Le Journal de Guy LaRoque? That's it. That's it. And he went down to New Orleans to try to find somebody to read it for him so he'll know. How did you know that? How did you know all that? Unless you're the man. Unless I'm what man? Nothing. Nothing. I'm going now. I'm... Antoine, and how complimentary it is that you remember. One never forgets a beautiful woman. It's her right enough. Did you hear the barman call her name? So if anyone knows where Sebastian Drake is, she does. <clears throat> My 
mind if I join you? Yes, I mind extremely. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to do it anyway. You realize, of course, I could call the innkeeper and have you ejected. Yep. But what you don't realize is that I could call the law and have you arrested. It's a ridiculous statement. I've never even seen you before. I've never seen you before, but I figure you owe me quite a lot of money. Owe you money? What would I owe you money for? For that load of furs you sold Mr. Proust this morning. They happen to be mine. Are you accusing me of stealing those furs? Well, not you exactly, but somebody did. And I'm still mighty interested in finding out how you got them. I don't see that it's any of your business. Well, it's my business if you happen to have gotten them from a man named Guy Rock. That's impossible. Guy Rock is dead. He's been dead for two months. Well, now, I wonder why no one bothered to tell me that. Because the news hasn't reached here yet. Well, it seems to have reached you somehow. Who told you? What does Guy Rock mean to you? Nothing, now that I know he's dead. But I still want to know where you got those furs. Who are you, anyway? By what right do you question me this way? Please, miss, if you'll just sit down, I'll try to explain. Is this man putting you to some trouble, miss? We oui, a great deal of trouble. Then it would be a pleasure for us to take care of it. I couldn't help wonder where you got them. Oh, believe me, I did not know they were stolen. He told me he bought them, the furs and the belt. I should have known better than to believe that. Well, who are you talking about? About a man I once thought I loved. About the man who tried to murder you. Well, who is he? His name is Sebastian Drake. He was once an officer in the British Navy until they sent him to capture Gilly Rock. Then he joined Le Rock and he became a pirate himself. All because I told him about this. Well, what's so important about that? Because in it, Guy tells where he buried his treasure. So he gave up his honor everything to get his hands on it. And now he thinks it's at the bottom of the Mississippi with you. Do you know where he is? I know where he was a few hours ago. Take me there. I've still got a score to settle with him. Not until I read this and see if it really tells. I've had to wait a long time for it. <gasps> it's here. It's here. I had to read that way through to find it. Now, will you take me to Sebastian Drake? We find the treasure first. I'm not interested in treasure. I want Drake. He's a very treacherous man. He will kill you if he gets a chance. He's already had his chance. Now, where is he? Now, you've read what this says. Can you find where the treasure is without it? I could go to the exact spot right now. All Did right, it? then. Well, now, why not? You're the only person in the world who knows where the treasure is. No one else can find out. Now, will you please take me to Sebastian Drake? If I do, will you help me afterward? If you want me to, yes. All right. I'll take you to the cabin.
Here, come inside. Oh, just a little life left in the coals. Uh, that ash and holy heat for hours. What do we do now? I'll wait. You better leave. You take the boat and go someplace where you know you'll be safe. I feel as safe here as any place. I'd just light a lantern and make it more comfortable. Oh, oh. Right. Of course, I'm sorry. He may not be back until morning. He may not be back for days. We could have the treasure by then. I've kept my part of the bargain. It's not my fault he's not here. Well, I see your point. I'm going to need a lantern, a shovel, and a rope. I'd like to have a gun. This is the only gun I have. It's not good for much outside of shooting birds. It's double barrel, too. Sorry, the place is closed. We had a little trouble. So I see. I'm looking for a man. I thought this a likely place to find him. I'm sorry, there's nobody here but me. He could have been here earlier. A man named Boone. I've never heard the name. The only stranger that has been here was the man who wrecked this place. Big as a bull and twice as strong. That's a one. Where'd he go? He took off with that Sylvie du Marais. Well, did he have something with him? Was he carrying something? I did not notice, monsieur, but uh, he left this behind. Ah, it's good to see you again, Mr. Harmon. Drop it, Skipper. We want to talk. Yes. We thought that for a first mate, you left a sinking ship a little early. Especially when the captain was dead and you should have been in command. The battle was lost. Nothing else we could do. Except search the rogue's cabin before you abandon ship. Uh, you wouldn't know that unless you search his cabin yourself. Exactly. And do you know what we found? We found something missing. The Rogue's journal, Drake. We want it. I don't have it. Maybe he's got the treasure already. That'd do just as well. Now, oh, listen, put your guns away. I need your help. That treasure's still underground, but it's not going to be there long because somebody else has that journal. And who would that be? A man named Boone, a girl named Sylvie. So that's what they were so thick about all of us said. All right. Let's get down to the river and stop wasting time. We can talk while we're moving.
doctor needs help. Is that part of the marshes or quicksand? I gotta go after him. When I get to him, keep this rope tied around the tree. Oui. I gotta tell you, I was talking to a man too much by the name of Drake. I let him know that you was alive. I told him everything before I realized who he was. When was that? This afternoon. In your cabin, Miss Sylvie. I tried to break away to warn me, but it was too late. He came running after me, shooting. So he's had plenty of time to find out where to gather. If he knows that, he knows where to look. You hang on to this, Hoops. But if he's after us and you don't even have a gun. Well, I've got you. And you're the only person in the world who knows where that treasure's buried. He won't bother us until we find it. You just sit tight. We'll be back for you. considerate of them to provide us with a beacon. Do we follow? Yeah. Each of us will take a section of the island to keep them surrounded. But don't show yourselves or make a move until we see that treasure above ground. Drake, shall we go after him? Why? Boone doesn't even know we're here unless Drake tells him. 
Drake won't do that. Let them do the digging. You've been wanting to dig for this treasure a long time, Drake. Show him where it is, Sylvie. Go ahead. Why not, Boone? There should be plenty here for all. One man, Boone, you'll have to help. Just to do it for me and you, no? No, you heard what Drake said. It's heavy. Let them move it for us. Right again, mate. We couldn't even carry that canoe anyhow. Don't think of making a break. I'm taking this to the boat, and I'm taking you to New Orleans. Heave her up. Will you shoot? Like sitting ducks. Well, Mr. Boone, you got to do for me what I did for you. And it all come out even, proper like. No, Hoops. You're still way ahead. If you hadn't have followed us, we'd all be finished. Uh-uh. It was my fault for putting Drake onto you in the first place. Forget it, Hoops. Oh, such ridiculous talk. Now eat this, Monsieur Hoops. Oh, oh Monsieur me. You're a coddling me to death. Mm, that is hot. <laughs> Eagle 